Good morning, everyone. I am extremely humbled uh, with this kind gesture from BSG. Thanks, Dr. Rutu, Dr. Amit, Dr. Dhaminder, Dr. Shali for this opportunity to be part of this very prestigious study group conference, which is, of course, still in its infancy. But I can see that last four years we have made a huge progress in terms of popularity, not only in terms of going pan India, but also in terms of getting lot lot of people, those who are interested in freedom, that is in pregnancy associated with their case report. Welcome Dr. Sunni and sir. This oration would have been complete uh, without your presence. Dr. Samadha, who is an elder brother, was kind enough to honor me and uh, once again I express my gratitude to the entire organizing team of PSG for having conferred upon me in this prestigious solution. Well, for the next 25 minutes, I will take you through my journey in the field of diabetes and pregnancy. We all know that gestational diabetes is any degree of glucose intolerance at onset or first recognition during pregnancy. Women with GDM may have only a minimal insulin deficiency. Dr. Shadi very rightly and beautifully related to what is the pathogenesis of GDM, how it develops. Most of the time, figures they are able to compensate by beta cell stimulation. There is almost an increase in insulin cells by 60%. But you have enough beta cell to compensate for that to maintain sugars within the normal range and tight glycemic control, which is physiologically maintained with mean fasting 74 mg and postprandial never exceeding 120 mg. That is how your beta cells are so well programmed. But unfortunately, moment there is a beta cell insufficiency that leads on to GDM, and we know GDM are fillers, those who are GDM in this pregnancy. Index pregnancy, the other ones were a much greater risk for developing type 2 diabetes subsequently over the next 10 years. So, again, this slide has been shown by her, but I must again allude to that it is relative insulin deficiency. These females at best may be IGP if they are non pregnant. So, the moment they are pregnant with that increase in insulin resistance, probably their beta cells are already having some degree of fatigue. They have a Maybe an inheritance, they are already obese, they are overaged, or any amount of stress or physical inertia push them to diagnose your GDM because beta cells are not able to compensate for that increase in insulin resistance. So, if you follow these young females who get pregnant, might be they had an adolescent obesity, they had a history of PCOD, and the moment they conceive, there is further increase in insulin resistance with markers of insulin resistance going up. Typically, is a epileptic reduction, leptin goes up, risk leptin will be very, very high, and regular binding protein or resistance, they also go up. The markers of inflammation could be TNF alpha, interleukin, and these are all these ways available in research labs. I'm not saying that everyone may be able to measure these markers, but common markers like HSCRP which is very, very technical and knowable. So the inflammatory markers or mediators which carry due to a diagnosis of GDM could be increased resistance, reduction in hyponectin, increased leptin levels, dysfetting, and of course, RB3,4, I mean, is a very, very good marker. There have been a lot of number of studies, longitudinal studies of looking at inflammatory markers in prediction of GDM, and I told you, hyponectin is a very, very useful marker, not only to predict onset of GDM, but it can also tell you that these females are at a greater risk for subsequent risk of developing type 2 diabetes if their adiponectin expression is very, very poor. And this is very long term data. So, adiponectin, leptin, resistant, RBP4, this is retinol, binding protein, misretin, CRP. These are very, very common markers. And enough evidence is there that they can not only predict onset of GDM, but subsequent risk of developing type 2 diabetes also in long term studies. So seeing that the protein I told you is very, very easily done and it is seen that it increases the first trimester of pregnancy which is related to high risk of developing GDM. And 
because there is a differential impact of the beta cell function or beta cell fatigue which happens subsequent CRP. If it is high in first semester, even if at that time sugar is normal, Professor Shishai says that one third of pregnancies in first semester you can pick up GDM. Caucasians will say it is 24 to 28 weeks. But if you do a C negative protein, if it is just above 2, that can get you a early diagnosis on GDM, or you may actually predict GDM that this female is likely to develop GDM in the second or third trimester. And this is what this APA publication talked about that first trimester C negative protein and subsequent risk of gestational diabetes, and there is a very, very positive correlation between levels of GDM, and it could be taken that if the CRP level is high, it may predict an onset of GDM in second and third trimester. Another study, this is an Indian data from Kolkata itself that C negative protein in early months of pregnancy as a screening tool for gestational diabetes in developing later months of pregnancy. So again it said that although C negative again is it might have a lot of confounding factors, even a simple URT you have seen viral infections. CRP will be very, very high. You see, CRP as high as 150 to 100, what to talk about, 2 or just more than 2. So, this study said that it may not be a reliable marker for early diagnosis of GDA. Another study said that there is no significant relationship, no causative relationship, or no causal relationship which could be established between the levels of CRP, the quantum of CRP, and the greater risk of developing. GBM. So we thought let's look into this marker. About 10 years ago we presented this data in April 2014 as a uh, uh, e-poster. We said that early pregnancy high sensitive CRP if you do, it could predict gestational diabetes. This is what was our hypothesis. We thought that let's do CRP at 12 to 13 weeks and follow these females with an early screening at 30 weeks and subsequently the risk of then developing GDM if they were negative in the first trimester. We picked up 200 females who came to our hospital as a first screening visit and we looked into their HSCRP values. If these are more than two, that can be thought it is a high risk and of course we followed these patients with oral GDP and look for third trimester also 24 to 28 weeks for onset of type 2 diabetes. And in this, again, that time, of course, we did the carpenter question criteria to pick up GDM. That time we did do a Dixie criteria, to be very honest. And the results were that there was a clear relationship between out of 287 females had HSCRP, which was more than 2, 130 females had CRP, which was absolutely within the normal range. And we followed these females for development of GDM in the third register and it was seen that the females which had high CRP, 87 females, they are 16 double GPM, so the prevalence was 18.3% versus the control group where it was 12.4% only. We looked into the age-wise distribution of these patients in study population again. One third female belong to younger age group, 20 to 25, 46% belong to age group, 26 to 30, and 22% belong to age group 31 to 35. So maximum cases they turn the GDM belong to 26 to 30. We also looked into the study group, which was 87 and 18% prevalence of GDM. Again, this has shown that all those females who developed GDM subsequently in third trimester, they had a higher age group, which was more than 30. We looked into their BMI and tried to put it again. Maximum, maximum number of cases belong to BMI between 25 to 29, which as per Indian ethnicity was a very clear obesity. We also looked into the parity, whether that has any relationship for development of GDM. Again, 43% cases they were primary and 57% they were already multi-data history. So from this study we concluded that all those females, 87 whom we followed and they developed GDM, 18%, they were more than 30 years old, they had a higher BMI between 25 to 29, 55%, 55 patients also had family skew diabetes, so they already had a very high risk for developing GDM. But in this again we were sorry that we concluded the data, although HSCRP was high in the group, 
एटीन परसेंट पेशेंट दो सौ एंड हाई सीआरपी दे डेवलप जीडीएम बसेस ट्वेल्व पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स परसेंट बट पी वैल्यू वाइज इट वाज नॉट वेरी वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट सो वी आल्सो कंक्लूडेड दैट दिस मे नॉट बी द बेस्ट ऑप्शन फॉर प्रोडिक्शन ऑफ जीडीएम वी डिड अनदर डेटा दिस वी प्रेजेंटेड बाय एटीन टू Now we thought let's look into hypoatrosis. Almost eight, ten years ago, lot of evidence came that hypoatrosis can predict the risk of developing GTM. It can also predict the risk of developing type two diabetes and B diabetes. So again, we looked into hypoatrosis as a predictor of GTM because there was always a controversy whether it is it is again just a finding, just a correlation, or whether it can predict. That is for developing GDM. Again, in this group, we find that the group which developed GDM, their age was higher as compared to the control group, and their BMI was also little on the high side. So, from this study, we concluded that an advancing age at the time of conception and increased BMI, especially if it is more than 25, and if you have high diagnosis less than 20, which is insufficient value. Nano mole biopsy was significantly associated with a greater risk for developing GDM. We also looked into the neonatal outcome of gestational diabetes, and this I remember was presented by Gary Bradley. He was 146. Although we were sensitized that I believe it should be close to 120, what we say today, but I think almost 16 years, 17 years ago, we were not very sure that. Most likely to ask this to be less than one twenty. As you can see, again, I think should have been less than six. It was six point four percent. So we looked into the data yeah, and found with this group of us, we found that there was a greater risk of hypoglycemia, forty four percent, and the these units born out of hypoglycemia. I mean, the mean age was six point four. It's not very high otherwise. Again, the risk of hypoglycemia was. Which is a single step 75 gram glucose 
irrespective of your meal status, any time in the day patient visits, first visits and due to a test. We found that these were absolutely matched in uh, the groups, both were matched in terms of their basic characteristics, their HPMNC, their weights and everything, and then we looked into their fetal and maternal outcomes. There was hardly any difference, I'll not be going into the details, but you could have a look, their f scores were same, their birth weights were absolutely identical, so were their head circumferences, the risk of prematurity, hypoglycemia, RDS, because we followed these patients in our hospital. And from this we concluded that whether you do it by IIT PSC criteria versus Gypsy, outcomes both in fetal as well as in matter tongue terms are absolutely matched. There is no difference between the outcomes. So from this study we concluded that there is no statistical difference in both maternal as well as fetal outcomes even if evaluated by GDM diagnosed by Dipsy criteria versus IATPSC criteria. So we again reinforce the same fact that single step Dipsy criteria that we use for screening and for diagnosis of GDM for being very very simple, visible, reproducible, it comes out to be very very economical and very very convenient for Indian population. And there are advantages because it is a very very simple test and it can be just only on a single visit versus IDPSG criteria which is based on HIPPO study. We all know a study of course a large study which has looked into the quantum of HB1C in different cohorts but unfortunately none of Indian relationship patients were part of this study. So criteria which we have to adopt from HIPPO study may not be a true reflection of our own ethnicity because Indian patients are at a greater risk for developing type 2 diabetes. Indian women have 11 fold increased risk of developing glucose intolerance as compared to the Caucasian and conversion of GDM to type 2 diabetes in Indian ethnicity is much much higher as compared to the Caucasian patient. So it is important that we must screen all Indian patients by our own indigenized criteria which is Lipsy single step criteria and this is what we have been propagating over last 15 to 20 years ever since we are in practice of diabetology in pregnancy. We did a conference in Delhi, Dipsy 2016. All these people, they were part of this organizing committee. And again, 2019, 20, uh, when I took over as president, uh, Dr. Shishai confirmed on me that uh, presidential oration. And we pledged there that whatsoever we do today, but we decided in 20 and we then revised, I told you, the guideline in 21 and we have tried to disseminate those guidelines to multiple webinars and I am very happy Dr. Sunil is here. We have carried that weapon beautifully across the country by doing wonderfully huge numbers of webinars. We also published this data which is Diagnosis and Principle of Management of Gestational Diabetes in Prevailing COVID-19 Pandemic. Again, we looked into the challenges people may not be able to come. So all the more, I think it is important to reinforce that single step criteria for diagnosis of type 2 diabetes is much more easy, feasible. It can be done even in a rural population by using a simple glucometer. And these, again, uh, this consensus was published in ICJDC in 2020 and 2021 guidelines which are already in your uh, uh, packet which is there. And we are still little, there are certain issues which we need to sit with the, all the mentors and Professor Shishai to take it further whether we can revise these guidelines for 23 and get it then subsequently published. Of late, Professor Shishai has been talking about this part of the matter where he is, he himself says that, says that March 2022 for the first time this insight came to me. Now he's talking about the primordial prevention. Primordial prevention by screening at B10 because he says it's very clearly demonstrated based on his own evidence and data that if you screen at 12 to 13 weeks, what we have been advocating earlier till last year, there is a fetal glucose steel phenomenon which happens. So mother's sugar may be normal because of little over functioning of the beta cell stimulation of the fetal pancreas. So even if you screen at 13 weeks, even if mother has some degree of glucose intolerance, because of fetal stimulation of pancreas, 
that sugar will come out to be normal. This is a typical fetal glucose state phenomenon. So he says that so as to avoid that overstimulation of beta cells of pancreas of the neonate, we must screen as early as 9 to 10 weeks. And this we have already put up a proposal to Government of India. Yesterday also I was talking to him and we will take it further. We will be very happy if Government of India takes that as a policy and does a, maybe a initially a pilot project and finally comes out with, with the guideline that this should be a part of urine screening. And as I said, uh, we uh, launched these guidelines in 21 and since then we have been doing huge numbers of webinars. We started in 21 and Dr. Sumi has carried that legacy in a beautiful way. I am sure he has already conducted more than 20 to 30 webinars on Dipsy guidelines and on patient uh, education, which is Prega Bites uh, or Talks. Uh, more than 50 programs he has already organized uh, across the country in different languages, which are relevant to that particular region. We also contributed bit by doing this uh, a chapter in diabetes in pregnancy book, again, of Shadrin New York on pregnancy in diabetes in dentistry. So, this was a little unexplored area. We also wrote a chapter, another book, which was published by Federation of Statics and Biology by Dr. Piki Saxena, where he highlighted on insulin therapy in pregnancy, titration, how to do that, and with the Gujarat group, Dr. Pratap and Mansi and uh, Sanjay, Dr. Shahi, we improved this insulin charging during pregnancy, although it is still category B. We are not advocating that every patient who gets diagnosed, if it is too genius, may not require any basal insulin at all, basically. But anyone who has a pre existing diabetes, she has been very well controlled on so charging. Even Katie now says that let's not remove charging, although level has been obviously. Uh, like category A in pregnancy, but for want of more glycemic control, if she has been doing very well on glycemic, we should not stop using glycemic. So we reviewed this literature that we got a population diabetes and metabolic syndrome. So to conclude, we all patients are afforded with this great opportunity to order the natural course of the disease and change the future health of women and their offspring today. And let's use this. This opportunity to play very religiously, very judiciously, invest in us for the patient. Let's avoid hyperglycemia, any degree of hyperglycemia in pregnancy, and pledge that tomorrow a conversion to NCDs may be taken care of. Because GDM is a great opportunity for prevention of NCD, was Professor Shichai very, very rightly said, and he says that we have to focus on diabetes pre generation. And in the focusing of diabetes free generation, it has to be a focus for the fetus for the future. So that all by him is absolutely marvelous. And we are obviously always celebrating uh, National Gestational Diabetes Arena Day on 10th of March, which happens to be uh, Professor Shishai and Martin, a living region. And this year it is already announced. Very uh, maybe chilling only. And so, next annual conference of diabetes in pregnancy basic group is happening on 10th of March at Chennai itself. So, this I already told you that we have gone to planning committee and we have talked about the body prevention next year. It gets adopted by Government of India. And towards the end, before I close, I must express my gratitude to all the mentors. Those who have taken me there, I am today Professor Vijay Tehan. He is the one who got me into field of medicine. Professor Tagora, I worked with him as of age 2000, and he changed my focus into field of diabetology. And Professor Vijay Shai, who always had handled me into the field of diabetes in pregnancy, and got me what I am probably able to do. a great contribute in the field of diabetology. My own colleagues, Dr. Ahuja, Dr. Hikesh, Dr. Sarma, she is a doctor back for the Sinana Hospital. All of our TDM projects we have done with her. And Dr. Shadi, she has always been a part of our all uh, projects, all studies we do together from two different sectors. My friends, those who have been part of my journey, again, they are all been doing their very well. Many of them are already super specialists. Ashwin is already a cardiologist. She is pursuing biology. 
this uh, is the guys in uh, Estonian biology, Dr. Kita Chiri, she's already one wounded HSCM project, she's already working in UK, and Pradeep on the right hand, last guy, he's the one who did that hyperhypnosis uh, as a director of JDM, and he's already a nephrologist now. So it is possibly their work, maybe I still don't want to take a credit out of them, they have been all part of this journey of my own family, my good parents, my workplace, they are living, they are praying for me every day. Today morning when I was having breakfast in the morning at a restaurant, they made a video call to wish me that. And best thing is their blessings and they have made huge difference in my life. Every day they perform, I am at home today morning also. They wish them love and support to me always. My daughter, Dr. Asta Chandra, she is a uh, budding dermatologist, Shubha, she is my niece. She is again a doctor, my own son in law, Dr. Sidhan Thayan, is a, again one of the top trained international cardiologists from Chair River Bangalore. She is already working with us in our hospital, and my son, uh, he is at US. He is an engineer, but he actually taught me how to analyze data, how to handle the city. He was easily very good at physics and mathematics. I remember early days, whenever I was putting my A's on India papers, I always needed his help because I was very poor in statistics. And without statistics, you cannot do and better. So he taught me the art of analysis, how to make that impressive, how to put it in that small abstract so that it gets uh, accepted. Thank you very much.